All right, before we begin, here's the chassis you have. It's the Super Micro 846 Echo 16-R12-00 Bravo. Again, that's 846 Echo 16 Ringo one two zero zero bravo so i know everyone got upset last time that i uh, was moving around a lot but i'm just going to do a walk into the room where my nas is currently stationed and show you just how loud it is and then from here on out i will have the tripod in action but i just want to give you guys a uh, idea of how loud this thing is. That's with the super micro fans and everything. And uh, after this, I will jump back to the uh, stationary footage. Sorry about that, guys. All right, so we're back. Um, I'm gonna show you guys the rest of the build now. Um, So here is the the main chassis. Obviously, there's 24 drives. Each one, uh, each sled, each one has a sled that you do have to screw in. Like I mentioned, I'll pop out my first drive of my array right here. It's not the smoothest action pulling out the drives, but one second. There we go. So you screw in uh, at six points, three on each side. And for shucked drives, it's actually, I'll go ahead and show you guys that real quick. Shuck drives is in hard drives that came out of uh, external enclosures, such as the popular eBay ones, the Easy Store, I believe is what they're called. For the shuck drives, it looks to be the same. This, my parity drive, is a shucked drive. So you've got the three points. I just do two per drive because you don't really need more than that. You probably don't need more than one, honestly, but you know, longevity and stuff like that. So the panel, I'm gonna take that off real quick. Mine's kind of beat out because of a dog, but I'll show you guys the rest of that. Yeah, I'll go ahead and move the camera. All right, um, I've got the RMX 580 power supply for this build. For this build, you are going to need six Molex connectors for the backplane of the hard drives. So the the hot swap backplane, the it's a it's a circuit board that controls the hard drives and their inputs. Blah blah blah. So that controls the inputs to the chassis itself. You know that's how it, the hard drives are read in. That's how everything becomes hot swappable. That's how uh, you, everything gets translated. So for the back plan to be powered, you need six Molex connectors, and you're going to need a beefy power supply. Don't skip out on the power supply this time around. Not for one of these kind of builds. Like I said, going to need six Molex connectors. Those are the old school. Fan connectors, not like the three or four pin ones that we have now, the tiny ones, but I'll put a picture up just probably in the middle of the screen. Back here we've got those super micro fans with the quick swap. These should come with them. If not, these are, you're going to spend 50 bucks on fans. Two here and three right here on the back plane. I'll give you a quick glance at the back plane. That's just a spare fan. See these cables? Oh, you see these cables down here? Those are each Molex connectors. Here, see these ribbons? This is the uh, splitter cable, which I will have a link to in the description that you will need to get. I just grabbed mine off Amazon. It ends up having these server grade connectors for things like the I.O. for the uh, case, which traditionally you would plug in your switch, uh, your power switch, your reset switch, your, hard, your HDD LED, all those things. Traditionally in super micro and server boards, it's just one big fat connector, but you need to split these up for consumer motherboards, which is what this is. This is my RAID card, and a Dell H3 
10 perk that's flashed to IT mode, so rather than it being a traditional raid card, it's, it sees each individual input as a, another SATA drive through these cables, which are the SF8890 cables. Let me grab this wire from here to show you guys. So, several things. Um, the back plane has three of these um, SF. Um, 89, 88 cables, I believe is what they're called. If not, I will post a picture. But basically, you got three of those on the back plane. Those are the data entry points, essentially, where they will uh, communicate to either... A RAID card is really what they should be talking to, like this. So, they're just two of these cables. That one, you know, they run to the back plane. So, you sh probably should run a RAID card if you're doing that. But, they also have the SF8988 ports to say the cables, which you can just plug directly into your motherboard. And, like, my ASRock still legend here, um, X57 still legend, has about six, maybe seven SATA ports. Which, not really enough for my array, but if that's fine for you, that's fine for you. Um, they do have... For this card, it holds two of those ports and the largest cables that I've seen that it can deal with, and I'll post just pics up on the screen, are actually uh, four each. So four times two of these ports right here, these cables, that's, you know, eight SATA cables that you can run to this backplane. You cannot run SATA to this backplane. It needs to be one of those SF8988 ports. And if I'm saying that wrong, I will do some kind of image or something. But I actually found the cable you need to, um, I've got a, I bought a spare one. I guess I just, as you can see, it takes one of those big chunky server ports and splits them up into the individual ribbons like we're used to on consumer motherboards like these. See these little two pin ribbon deals and that's what they are all about if I can... I'm sorry guys I'm... Oh. so yeah Again, backplane has three of those inputs. This raid card has two. Um, so this raid card can actually power the entire array, but that just means that the array is slower than it would be if I had like three individual raid cards. I won't be able to get the max bandwidth because this controller can actually control all those speeds at once. But that's only because I'm running these. Uh, SF88 or SF8988 cables to the back plane directly. If I were to have the those cables to SATA cables, I would be limited to those drives at full speed essentially. But because I'm running this RAID card, this RAID card will control all the drives on the array, minus like the SSDs that I have plugged directly into the motherboard, which they these actually do work. You can slot them right into the uh, back plane. You. I don't know about getting a custom sled, I wouldn't even do that, I would just shove them right in. Like, that's what I've done, but... Um, you can do that too. But, the main thing is, if you're gonna get a build like this, you need a RAID card. I, I'm gonna go ahead and say you need a RAID card. So that it can control the entire array. You're gonna need to flash it to IT mode. You need to look into flashing into IT mode or having it come to you in IT mode. That was not very hard. It's basically a, um, a bit more detailed BIOS update with some command line interface, I believe. It's been about a year since I've done it. I can't quite remember. I actually found the Molex cable, in case I don't put the picture up. That's what the Molex is, and there's six of these that run into this back plane, which I'm going to go ahead and show you now. Again, those are three more fans, super micro fans. Um, down here... You can see the Molex cables being plugged in. In addition to 
these blue cables down here those are into the SF8986 ports as you can see that right there hold on yep see those blue ribbons they run directly into the back plane there's two here and there is a third right there so that's how this interacts with uh, the RAID card. There's nothing really you can put on a consumer board that will interact with these unless you get the these cables to uh, say the cables. I'll have most of this linked into the description, okay? Just, uh, just I didn't think anyone would watch this fucking video, but apparently everyone did. So <laughs> I thought like maybe my friends would watch it. So I'm going to go ahead and link all that. In the description, I'll have it all marked for you. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Um, I don't think whenever you shuck drives, let me check real quick. I don't think you have to do the three pin thing. Let me check, see if mine's even held on. Okay, well, I'm not sure. I'm gonna go ahead and say I don't think so. You can see that piece of tape I have? That's for when you shuck drives and you need to cover that pin for it to interact with the PSU. I'm not entirely sure. I'm not going to take it off. That's the only thing I will leave you questioning. But that's an annoying fix. I will take you less than 10 minutes to do with each one of your drives if you have to do it. And you're going to do that either way with a normal consumer uh, just setup, I guess. But yeah, it is a bit of work. So like I said... If you're gonna do something like this, you're gonna need a RAID card for more than you know six, eight drives traditionally. So you'll have that probably if you're looking at a setup like this. You'll have a RAID card either way. Um, you might need a new power supply for the six Molex cables. And uh, up to your, you know, however you wanna do the cooling solution, which I, uh, I displayed it to you guys, it's loud as shit. So, it's loud as heck, so you guys need to uh, figure out if that's something you want to deal with. You don't need these extra fans. This is just what I was trying to get the Arctic stuff to work with. I had the 80 mil millimeters in here. I had to splice off. They had the they had the mini Molex and the fan, um, the three pin, four pin fan connector, and I had to, you know, cut the Molex off, and it killed one of the fans that I ordered it was a pain um, you will need for the fans either way you're gonna need a some kind of splitter or a fan hub just so you can get more fan inputs you're gonna have to deal with that because I've got one for the CPU cooler obviously and then two of the normal fans on here I, I believe there's one more input on this motherboard but that's still not enough to power the three up front so I think that's all that I've gone over. If you made it this far, uh, just if someone someone DMs me, I'll give this away. The, the, this adapter. Uh, yeah. So that'll be cool if someone wants to win that. Uh, if you really want something like this, it's. Kind of rough. I, it, I say it's rough. It's been it's been nice. I'm I'm not gonna have to worry about expanding storage. You know if you're gonna be a high end user and you're gonna need all these fucking slots, you're, you're gonna know. And I mean, it's it's nice just to be able to hot swap everything. You never have to really shut the array off. You you will have to maybe like a label maker or something to keep track of what what drive goes where and what sled. You know, these are things you have to think about. Like, if the array was running, I could just pop this one out, screw in a couple screws, you know, and then just go, boom. Unraid will recognize it because it's all hot swappable. But it, it there's some setup, power supply, fans, and then that adapter for the power switch, which is right there. Um, there is a reset thing, but it's one of those where you have to stick like a 
you know, a needle inside to hit it. It's really fucking small. Yeah, and I I think that's it, guys. I think uh, I'm going to call it there. It's a 4U, which means it takes up four um, U's in a server rack. Um, I bought... Go with the basic rails. I don't think they have the proper super micro rails at uh, the ones that like allow you to work on the server while it's completely out of the rack. I don't think they have those at the server store. I'm not real sure. There's a video out there where you look at blue versus yellow label super micro uh, rails, and you know that's ultimately up to you to look into. I'm not going to get into the Super Micro Rail stuff because I don't know a whole lot. This thing did originally come with um, these little airflow things where you put over the board and the heat sinks and it, you know, helps direct air out of the case better, stuff like that. Um, instead of getting rid of, if you wanted to keep, because I, see I've got this massive hole now in the back of mine because I threw the power supply uh, like system that guided uh, the, the, it's a sheet of metal that guides the power supplies into the connectors. I threw that away. I shouldn't have. You can buy these dummy PSU things that will just, you know, slot in, keep the hole covered, and then you could maybe put, if you had a smaller motherboard, you could lower it or and put that in. I don't know. Yeah. I'll give this away too. I really don't. I have no use for this. You know, I'm just trying to get rid of shit at this point. Um. So yeah, that's really it. Have a good day. Sorry I stopped using the tripod very much. Yeah, I could go further into detail and show you the back plan a bit more, but I think that's pretty much the gist. I explained it well, I believe, and I'll have pictures and everything. So that's it. Thank you guys.